And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, hello and welcome to the Weighing In Podcast, where my man, the real punk, Josh Thompson, is ready to just inundate you with incredible information. Crowd goes wild. About nothing. <laughs> the champ <laughs> is here. The champ is here. Well, it used to be champ. Now it's called yeah, yeah, former, yeah. and it just goes away. Never... It goes away for everyone. It's just the way it is. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Uh, you say it goes away for everyone, but I mean, like guys like John Jones, right? I mean, he may retire a champion. He's talking about retiring after the steep Yeah, fight. but if he retires, he's no longer the champion. He's former. I don't, I don't, I yes. don't really look at it that way. Yeah, no, what, how do you not look at it that way? When Habib, when Habib retired, he was twenty nine and zero, and the champion yeah. is he the champion? Or is he a former champion? If he wanted to be, he still could be. Is he a former champion? We'll never know. He's you no, know, I do champion. know because there's he's this guy eight, named Islam Makachev who is the champion. He's the second champion. <laughs> That's the way it goes. And this is what I was talking about when I said he's going to inundate you with knowledge about nothing. <laughs> well, John, there's no other way of looking at it. The champ didn't really like retire here. He didn't really like lose his belt he You're right he did away it. from the sport he, he walked away so now he's a former no he's technically still a champion he, he just he just decided to like you know i don't need to defend this thing anymore it's too easy for me okay. john jones may be doing the same thing he may just be like you know what i'm, I'm tired of beating the same old tomato cans let me just walk away I'm is good. that what you it know, is they can yeah. just talk about me for the rest of my life if he does walk away i would put that right up there with the with the Habib of, I don't give a fuck what you think. He's right up there with it. It really is because, like, he's look. Everyone wants to fight. Wants him to see. Want to see him fight Tom Aspinall. Yes, I right. want to see him fight Tom Aspinall. Yes, everyone does. John Jones because it's does a great not fight. Give a shit. What no. He, okay. Well, well, hold on. And, and John Jones shouldn't. But you know that's not the take. Normally, the take is is that people let that shit eat at them, and they come back and do it just that one time, and and guess what? Well, they end up losing, or something that's, happens. That's right? the difference between people that are considered intelligent and people that are considered uh, you're not too bright. I, I mean, <laughs> it's just it's just that desire to want to prove people wrong that they have that. Sure, and, it is, and that desire to no, I can do it one more time. I can yeah. do it one more time. You know, but John's smart enough to know, hey, he is getting, not that he's old, but he's getting older. And at this point, there, you know, there comes that, I always say it, man, you're, the, you're, it's, it's like the lions of the world. When you're taking a look at a pride of lions and you've got the male lion, man, and you know, he is, he's got all of his. Linus is out there. He's got his harem man, and he's living he's good. Side chicks. Is he's, what he's, got. he's living good for a couple yeah. of years, and eventually, here comes that one lion that everyone goes, "Uh oh, this one's different. This one, this one, this one can match up." And all of a sudden, that lion kicks his ass and takes his harem and just shoves him off, and everyone goes, "See, that's just so. That's just so terrible. No, it's just the way the world works." And that's what's going to happen to every fighter unless you do what Habib did. And John Jones might do it. It's a smart move. I like You it. know, I, I read an article that lions, the, the head, you know, whatever, the, the main lion has to have sex like 30, 40 times a day. Yeah. And if he doesn't, the lioness. They, they bite his balls. They bite his balls. They, they chase after him. Balls. bite his balls. That's not really turning me on, ladies. Like that's not making me want to have more sex. I'm sorry. I gotta, I gotta say, it would keep you keep you fucking on your toes, though. Bro, yeah. I'm not trying to like. If you're trying to snap at my balls, I'm not trying to pound the pee hole more, oh, right? Dude, that shit hurt. You, you, like, you, you can't you, lead the pride, buddy. You yeah. can't leave the pride. <laughs> oh man, I can't imagine, man. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it's hard enough to keep one woman happy, let alone oh, a pride dude. of women. I do. This is where this is where I say all these. You hold on, George. My my whole joke with you, with the whole thing was, yeah, you know, I had a friend who was, he lives in, uh, he lives in Utah there, and I'm always joking about polygamy and stuff with him and stuff. And he went to BYU, and he's he's got his wife who was a volleyball player at BYU. She's beautiful. He's got a smoke. She's, she's probably got, tall too. Oh, huh? she, dude, she's she is fucking smoking. smoking hot. 
And, you know, he's always talking about, man, he says, you know, I, I, should, I should, you know, get another one. I said, dude, do you realize how fucking horrible that would be? And he goes, what are you talking about, man? I said, There's no way. I said, you're like every guy. We think about sex for the moment. I go, and so then, oh, look, okay, so then you go and you marry this and you have, you know, you're going to have sex before, but whatever. I go, eventually, you go, I'm tired of having sex with that. I said, and now you have it. And now she's teaming up with your other wife to destroy you because she's tired of your shit and you got to do all this stuff. And it's like, oh, no, 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 no. That's why this whole thing about, oh, you know, guys would, you know, want polygamy. No, this one doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> one is enough. I can't even handle the one. Yeah, I, I did this thing on like a long time ago about gay marriage when they were talking about making it, uh, you know, the same as regular I, marriage. Dude, I see. I'm, I'm all for it. I think every gay person they, should be just as miserable as every heterosexual person. Yep. I'm, I was uh, my take on it was like, look, it becomes a slippery slope. Like if you do, if you want to change the definition of marriage. But look, the bottom line is just let everyone marry whoever they want. OK, Who cares? But I, I got into the whole polygamy thing like when I'm like. So then what do we do about people that are that like with polygamy? Like they have multiple wives and I, why wouldn't they be able to do it? They're like, because it's not the same. And I'm like, no, no, it's the same. It's the same. Why do we not allow them to do it then? Do you know, you know, do you like, know how polygamy really started as far as, but, you know, like with the Mormons, you know why? Why? Because they, when coming out West, all the men were dying because they're doing, you know, things and you know, crashing stuff and falling off of cliffs and being killed by Native Americans and things like that. And so you had this plethora of women with no one to take care of them, no one to, you know, so they said, oh, this is a good idea. So, so you're saying I lived in the wrong era. <laughs> I lived in the wrong, but I say, I look, when they were doing the whole like legalization for gay marriage, I was like, they can all just be as miserable as the rest of us. Thank you. People. Like, I don't think that they should be, they should be, uh, you know, kept back from being miserable like us. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like it's so funny. Cause you know, then they, they legalized, like, like they called it gay, you know, they called gay marriage was just marriage now. Yeah. And it was just funny how they, it is. <laughs> what I was just saying was they were, um, then their race, their divorce rate jumped like 60%. I'm like, what did you guys expect to happen? Like, this is exactly what happened. You guys finally got what you wanted. Just like when oh, yeah. guys finally get the nut with the girl, right? As soon as they're done, they're like, fuck, what did I do? <laughs> like, <laughs> nothing's changed. It's all the same. Oh, they, everybody, they want it. They want it. They want it. They, Every, they get it. And they're like, well, everything is what I Everything thought. is about the angle you're looking at something. <laughs> no, it's... <laughs> It's really like it's uh what's that called when it's that that you they gratification that self gratification right there on the spot as soon as you get it though you're done you're like damn you're just trying to find the quickest way out of the house all I know <laughs> is that this section of our show is now gonna make Miss McCarthy kick my ass <laughs> <laughs> it's okay it's okay it wouldn't be the first time no well not oh uh, it wouldn't be the first time speaking of saying staying salty we're sponsored by <laughs> Element. <laughs> Go, George! <laughs> if you oh, order from our link in the bio, you get a free sample pack every time you every order. Time. Get the packets, add it to cold water, get the cans, put it in the fridge. You can run 50 miles, I promise. 50 miles. 50, 50 miles? 50. 50. 50, 50. Oh, man. Look, uh, guys, man, we just uh, we were just able to strike a new deal with Element, and uh, we'll be extending our relationship Love with them, Element. you know? They are amazing. I I like the cans for on the go, like when I'm in the car, that kind of thing. I also love my Element uh, Yeti that they provided with us. Man, these are awesome. Stay salty, as you can see. But uh, that's funny. I was trying to explain to um, one of the parents at my son's soccer game. I'm like, yeah, it's got like a little nipple on it. <laughs> She's like, I've never heard it called a nipple. I've never it called that. That's not what I call a nipple. Okay, but it's close enough. Okay, okay. but it's like something where you don't got to drink out of it. When I'm driving in the car. I'm afraid of making a mess. Like you hit a bump, whatever it is, right? So I'm like, this this thing's awesome. And you just screw it on, screw, yeah, unscrew I like, it. I, I whole, like that whole, one. See, the, the best part about that one is off. that one fits in my tractor. It fits in my skid steer. Yep. It fits in my excavator this where it awesome. doesn't. It's perfect. It's perfect. It fits in my, yeah, it fits in my uh, my Jeep in the cup yep. holder. 
All the other ones don't. Yep. Too Unless big. you get like one of those Stanleys, right? Where like the bottom is narrow and the top, then it's all bulky and weird. And I'm like, nah. you know, this makes me feel more like a man when I drink out of this one here. There so. you go. Perfect. Because I'm drinking out of a nipple. That's why. It's okay. Like, well, of course. Yes. That's why you like it. Yeah. Yeah. It makes you feel like a man. Yeah, that's right. It makes you more anyways, feel, feel at hey, home. Hey, guys. Stay salty, though. Look, try, try Hit our link down below. Every purchase you make uh, through our link, they'll send you over some bonus product. It's amazing. I'm just being honest. Put the cans inside the fridge. Grab them on the go. It tastes better cold. So if you're making it in oh, a yeah. Yeti like I do with the packets sometimes, and uh, you do that, I put some ice in there, shake it, put it in the fridge, or put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes, pull it out. It's money. Just money. It just feels refreshing to drink it. Uh, but I like it cold. John, I think you're the same way. You like it cold. Dude, ice cold, man. The raspberry, the grapefruit, the citrus, salt, all of them. I got the watermelon lately. The watermelon, you get the watermelon? Is good. Yes, I have. The watermelon's the watermelon's awesome. Really I love the good. watermelon. Yeah, I like, the, I like watermelon. the watermelon. I'm a watermelon kind of guy. There's always watermelon in my house. Always. Even when it's not in season. Well, you know what? The the weird one is, though, the it's... And I, Josh will tell you, I love hot, spicy food. You know, it, it doesn't affect me the same way it affects Josh. So, but they have the one with habanero in it, and I cannot get used to it. I, I haven't had that one. I can. You haven't had that one? No. They've got the they're, one. They're, I can't think. Holding of, back on me. I can't think of what it is. I want to say it's like I want to say it's mango, mango habanero. Oh. And it's like I'm just every time I drink it, it's got it's got a little bit of heat to it. I'm like, it tastes good, but I'm just I just can't get over the cold with a little bit of the the we, spice. It's a little weird. John can't handle it. We did the one chip can't challenge. A lot I just things. I just destroyed John in the one chip challenge. Oh. If you guys haven't seen it yet, you guys can go back yeah. through our old yeah. videos. Please do the one chip challenge. Please go. Yeah. It was the easiest thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah. And uh <laughs> but yeah, but I haven't had the mango habanero. That sounds good because I always have watermelon in my house because I'm a teen with a little bit of lime on the watermelon. Ah, oh, it's money. Just money, you know, but uh, you put a little bit of that chamoy on there too, and it's it's so good, so good. Anyways, but I always have watermelon in the house. Kids love watermelon, yep. especially right now. It was it was 107 degrees on Sunday night when Kellen was playing in the finals of his uh, his soccer tournament. Um, yeah, ah oh, man, I felt so bad for him, man. They they came up short in the finals, so second place is what it was. Right. But uh, they felt good. Did man. they, they play? Good. Did they play to their ability? Uh, I don't think neither team did, even though they lost, even the other team won. I don't think neither team did because the earlier game, it was 106. I'm sorry, 104. The earlier game was 107 in the finals Jeez. at 630 at night. That's so they got, it, yeah. And I think just it was their fifth game because they played one game Monday night, two games uh, Saturday, two games Sunday because they were in the finals. It's a lot. So yeah, both teams looked a little slow and sluggish. You know, they weren't making clean, crisp pass. They were, but it was fun. It was good to see the kids. For me, it was more about this is the first tournament they've played together as a team. It's Monday, Friday night was the first game they'd ever played together as a team, you know, because they had a new coach that came in, new uh, new players that came in. They had maybe just five of their original players. And so, you know, out of 13, 13 players total. So, um, yeah, it just it was good to see them play as a unit. They played really well throughout the tournament. The heat was <laughs> torture. That's the whole thing. Yeah, it was awesome to see. They were so positive and they were happy. My son was just, he was, he enjoyed it so much. Perfect. He's like, this is, this is what it's like. Huh? Like he just enjoyed playing with a team that wasn't negative and positive. He kept it positive. So that was a good focus. We had a great time. That's so, nice. um, but yeah, look, if you guys haven't tried element, make sure you guys hit the link down below, Back check down. out element. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely something to use right now during the hot, uh, summer days. Good for so you. Check them all out. My farm needs the earth, the air and the water. I get my energy going on Element Electrolyte Drink Mix. Clean, good tasting energy that feeds me like I feed my plants and animals. And after a long day on the tractor, when it's time to shoot the podcast, I drink Element so that I can stay energized and stay salty. Let's get it on. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right in and we'll go, we'll go with the PFL first. Like we normally do look, we're doing it based off the fact Friday, that they're on Friday, Saturday for the UFC, Saturday for the UFC. When we talk about the shows, when we talk about the fights, um, like usually Sunday morning or Saturday night, it's basically because whatever show we just saw is the one we talk about because it's fresh on our mind. We give you the best recap right off the bat because we normally film right after the show. 
uh, that night. So we can have it dropped to you by Sunday morning. Plus George's on the West coast and the guy on the West coast, it's only like 10 o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. So it's perfect for him. If he's going to edit and George is working like 55 jobs. So (laughs) George doesn't have a lot of time. And so John and I can go to bed by like at least one or two, hopefully, <laughs> if we're lucky. But George can edit until, you know, 11 o'clock or midnight. So we, that's why we try to get this done. It's kind of nice having George on the West Coast, to be honest. It really is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Well, hey, let's go ahead and jump right into uh, the PFL. And John, what you got for me? There, Look, buddy? the PFL has got a fantastic main event with a guy that two guys that I've talked about and covered just too many times and and I, I i love both of them it's kind of one of those now i don't know i can't root for anyone i've just got to root for uh, a great fight brendan locknane who has been the pfl champion won the the featherweight title a year ago not not last season but the one before mm-hmm. uh is taking on kai kamaka the third who you and i both know personally coming from bellator he's a phenomenal athlete great talent super fast um really is coming into his own now as a fighter too he was in the ufc he was a little young uh and and when i say young it was he didn't fight smart fight iq wasn't up to his athleticism and so he would try to out athlete people at times when he needed to be smart and fight you know to make different decisions and he wasn't doing those things he was going after being exciting and all those things and now he is exciting he's entertaining as a fighter he's so good with his hands and kicks he's got good wrestling and he's up against a tough son of a bitch in brendan lockney yeah he's up against brendan lockney uh he is tough but there's ways to beat brendan Lockney. oh absolutely okay brendan's very boxing head heavy uh you know he can wrestle he's not the easiest guy to take down if he does hit the ground he's no slouch off of his back he can get back up to his feet yep. Where Kamaka's, I think, got the advantages in the power and his kicks. If he can start to get quick with the head with the heavy calf kick early, that'll take away some of the power from Brendan Lockne. And Kamaka's kicks are nasty when he uses them in sequences with his punches. That's that's what he's got to do right off the bat. If he waits by the end of the first round to start kicking, the the fight will get away from him. It's only a three round fight. It's not a five round fight. It's not the finals, and so it's going to be a three round fight. He, he needs to get started within the first, I'd say, 30 seconds. got to be a kick. You got to get after those kicks right away. Start trying to slow Lockname down because Lockname will walk forward. Yep. He'll put pressure. Yeah. He'll step into those kicks. He'll try and land the heavy shots. He'll try to barrage you with big punches. He fights a little bit like a Clay Collard, but I think he's got better, I don't want to say better hands, just a different style of boxing. He's got heavier hands. He oh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's got. I, I didn't. I didn't say he didn't have heavy hands. I meant like he didn't have. He doesn't have better hands. No, he's got. It's different. He's got more They're power different. per yeah. punch than Clay. Clay throws. I think with more volume. Absolutely, absolutely. But I think the way that uh, Lock Name fights is going to be. It could pose problems. But if he, if if Kai gets started on that those calf kicks early, I think he'll have success as the fight goes on because he's got to keep. Uh, lock name from walking forward so to keep that pressure off of him because i've seen before kamaka doesn't fight as good off of his back foot true he fights better when he's putting the pressure he's taking control of the center of the cage and and dictating the pace of the fight that's when he fights the best and we've seen that with a lot of hawaiians you know whether it's ray cooper whether it's bj penn all the guys from hawaii they're Yancy, the best Yancy when they're Maderos, controlling all of them yep. yeah. when they're yeah. controlling that tempo of the fight man guys just can't put they, they can't handle it so Kai's got to make sure he's controlling that tempo to fight. He's controlling where the fight goes. And I think the best way to do it is by letting those leg kicks go early and often to slow lock name down. And then he can start letting the hands touch him a little bit, moving the head offline and, uh, and staying tight with his defense, you know, and being right in front of him. Cause I think even though lock a big guy, we stood with, I stood next to him. I was like, geez, man, you <laughs> You make the weight. I was like, I can't that was when I introduced like, you to him. I yeah. mean, you, you look, you go, yeah. and he's a featherweight. <laughs> I go, yeah. I'm just like, this is crazy, man. Yeah. The times have changed. Oh, man. So, he is. He's big. Yeah. And look, he's tough as hell. Yeah. Yep. The first time I ever watched Brendan was we were in uh, Russia, and he was fighting a Russian in the ACB, and the Russian was kicking and broke his arm. Mm-hmm. And he, he fucking went through the fight with that broken arm, won the fight. Yeah. And you look and you go, you're a tough son of a bitch. So he's he's definitely tough, but Kai Kamaka has got all the talent necessary to win the fight 
and to get into that million dollar finals. Yeah. It's just a matter of how how smart does he fight. So I don't I don't think that the fighting smart is so much a problem anymore. What it is is just not doing enough output. That's the whole. Them- but that's fighting smart, Josh, because it's a matter of using your tools. Because now Kai is he, he was that guy that was doing blitzes before and and, and overextending and and putting himself. And he's got he's got a Gifford Jimmy Gifford uh, is in his corner and has been working on his hands and he's just way better with his hands. But even Giffy is telling him, you got to let your hands go. You're throwing a one, two. And just like, you know, we talk about all the time, sometimes you just got to throw that three, four, because that's what's going to touch them when the one, two, they're able to block and see, and they just don't expect that three, four, and all of a sudden, and it's hitting them, and that's causing them to degrade in the fight. And that's really what he's got to do. But I think you're you're, you're absolutely right. He needs to attack that front leg because – Brendan is he's heavy on that front leg. Inside out too, not just on the outside oh, of the yeah. cab. He's got to hit the inside yeah. inside leg kick as well. Uh you got Magomed Umalatov. Um- Umalatov. <laughs> Umalatov versus Naaman Gracie. Explain yeah. to me how Naaman Gracie got into the into the semifinals because I know that he wasn't going to make it in. No, but- he he uh you know, you got to figure Naaman lost his first fight of in his PFL career going against a guy that he had fought before in Goichi Yamauchi. It was a close fight. He ended up losing a, a close decision. Then he took on Don Madge. Don Madge had won his first fight, got six points in beating Brendan Ward in the first round. Mm-hmm. Then Don Madge fought Naaman Gracie, and Naaman won a unanimous decision, but dominated the fight, mm-hmm. just dominated the fight. And so Don Madge, based on points, he was going to the finals, but he got hurt. And so they went and took and uh, said, you know what? We're going to put uh, Naaman Gracie in there because he was next in line with the points. And uh, they could have picked a couple of guys. No, they could have picked a couple of guys, but he was right, he's right there with the points. And if you're going to take a look and say, if I'm going to put someone in there, I think I'll put that guy with the name Gracie in there. I was just going to ask you that. Do you, <laughs> I was just going to ask you that. Like We've seen it throughout yeah. the how they do the brackets and certain fighters get a little, seem like a little... Uh, Little bump, uh, Don Davis privilege. Little bump, and and so Don Davis privilege. Little bump I like that. The Don Davis privilege, yeah. but uh, I think maybe the Gracie gave him a little bit of privilege there. Yeah, I think it might have. But you know what? Uh, to me, I'm um, being honest. When I look at this, this makes an interesting fight because Umlatov is good on the feet. He's good on the ground, and Gracie is obviously really good on the ground. And he's got the he's got attacks on the ground that will give Umlatov problems. Uh, Umlatov, if there's one thing you can take a look at, you know, where he is heavy on his ground game and, and what he does, and he leaves his legs out there at times for someone to go for a leg attack. It's not that I'm that he doesn't know how to defend, but it's there, and Naaman Gracie's really good at his, at his uh, leg attacks. So I look and I go, in the stand-up, Umlatov may have more power. Gracie's great with elbows, but he can't use elbows here. And so that's a big factor in the in the stand-up. I'll go with Umlatov having the advantage in the stand-up. And on the ground, I'm going to say that Gracie's got the advantage, but Umlatov's really good. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Umlatov is just a different, a different pace, a different speed in how he fights. Yeah. Uh, Gracie is someone that kind of lets the fight develop in front of him, and – he fights at a slower pace. Now he's got the ability, I think, to chase the leg locks uh, on the ground if he gets there. But do you want to give up that position to potentially be put on bottom? That's the next question. Not against somebody like Omotov who can be on top and do damage, and then you're never you're never getting off the bottom. You know, more of that you know Russian style of just control the top position and you know ground and pound and just can smother you to death. So, uh, but Naaman though. The way for I I feel the way for him to get this fight is to try to get to some sort of body lock, try to get some sort of takedown where he can control him on the way down so he can go right to the back or right to side control or right to half guard and to control a position. It's just not going to be easy because the speed that Umatov fights at is a different pace than which Gracie fights at. A different so RPM. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the way that they it's the way they run their sure. It's the way they but run the, their but their the way they fight. The one thing I'll give it. Gracie has proven his wrestling is good. He can actually wrestle. Most people, you know, you don't give credit to a lot of 
guys that come from a jujitsu background stuff. He has worked on his wrestling. He's taken down guys that are, you know, NC2A champions uh, that we've seen and stuff. He's done really well with a lot of his, he's got a variety of takedowns, but he, he actually, he runs a double leg beautifully, mm-hmm. you know? And so Umlatov, you're, you're talking about the body lock. I agree with you, but if I'm going to look at a way that he can be taken off, he does when he comes forward. He leaves himself open, and you'll see that Gracie will look for that double leg, a blast double to drive him across the cage and put him down. You know, Russians wrestle a little bit differently. Just a little bit. (laughs) Just a little. (laughs) Uh, Gabriel Braga versus Timur Hizriev. This is the other half of that featherweight. This one's fantastic. Look, Hizriev has proven to everybody. You know, we knew how good he was, and we talked about him, you know, just when they put him into this tournament. There's your guy that's going to go to the finals. Yeah. Well, he's going up against Gabriel Braga, who, you know, has been to the finals. He uh, he lost in the finals, but Gabriel Braga is the real deal. Uh, he's only got the one loss. He's 14-1, and one, but Hizriev is undefeated at 16-0, and 0, and he is just good everywhere. He's got good stand-up. His wrestling is fantastic. He does beautiful things. He does the Corey Colot flip backwards to get out of single legs. And so when someone thinks they're going to take him down, all of a sudden he's doing a backflip. He's just fun to watch. And the the one part about him, Josh, he just keeps improving too. You can see the improvements in his game. And he's just that good. No, he is. I mean, John, you and I have been high on him since he stepped foot. I think he was what? 19 20 yeah. when he came to, to bellator yeah, very I think he was he was really young just a stud he reminds me a little bit of umar i actually think he's actually a little bit more fine-tuned than umar was at 19 20 21 years old yeah, he might you be. know um just a stud fighter hey gabriel braga though coming off of last year uh being in the was it last year in the finals yeah he was in the finals against uh pineda yeah, yeah he was in the finals against pineda last year look he's a stud man he's a stud he is and so uh he seems like he is definitely um, come to grips that, you know, he lost his father. Time has passed and he's moved on. Not obviously you never move on, but I'm simply saying like he's, he's able to get back to being focused on to what the goal is. And the goal is to, you know, life moves on and you got to make sure that you stay on track to, to what got you to the big dance. And so he's doing this. This is a very tough fight for him. Um, I think on the feet, he, he, I think on the feet, it could be a very close fight. But I think uh, his rev is going to get some takedowns. And on the ground, I think it's a different fight. Yeah, uh, I agree with you in the fact. On the feet, it's it's going to be close. Uh, Braga is really comfortable on his feet. He's got power in his hands, but so does his rev. And his rev likes to, look, he likes to engage in the stand-up. It's almost like he would rather be in the stand-up than he would in uh, getting to a grappling position. But he will always look for the opening for the grappling to just enhance his stand up because it puts the other person on defense against being taken down. And he's going to do that with Braga. And I guarantee he's going to get Braga down. There's Mm. unless Braga knocks him out, you know, if this fight goes, he's going to get him down. So it's a matter of what does Braga do to get himself back to his feet? How successful is he with that? But, yeah, he's got to make he's got to make his rev pay every time uh, he's able to get back to his feet. He's got to make him pay right there on the spot. Put put instant pressure on him right away. Try to make him react. Yeah, when, you know, so it's gonna be that's gonna be a chess match. I think there's Braga's got to be very cautious that he's not over uh, overextending, leaving himself out enough to be taken down easily. And his rev is he, on the feet. It's an, it's a more of an equal fight, but I give the advantage slightly to Braga. But on the ground, I don't think there's any there's any uh, there's any way that Braga wins that fight on the ground. He's got to get back to his feet. So if you're looking at it right, his rev has the advantage on the ground. Braga's got the advantage on the feet, and a slight advantage on the feet, I should say. Yeah. Uh, next fight: Shamil uh, Musaya versus Mur- uh, Murad Ramazanov. <laughs> Very good. Look at you. <laughs> Jeez. But the funny part, okay, and this is where you look at sometimes with the PFL and the points and everything. These guys just fought. This was their last fight. This is a rematch of a fight that Shamil won. And you're looking, you you could take a look because they just faced off. They were 17 and 0 against 12 and 0. And now if you look at their records, it's 12 and 1 against 18 and 0. 
this is what the points system will do at times. I look and it's like it's too bad that you couldn't have, mm. you know, switched this up with Umlatov, you know, taking on someone and Gracie taking on the other. But it's just the way the point system goes. But look, both of these guys are phenomenal. And the real question is, is did what did Ramazanov learn from that first fight that he's going to change? Because, you know, Musayev, we've watched, you know, he dude, he went through Logan Storley mm-hmm. like he wasn't there. That was crazy. I mean, just took over in that fight, you know, halfway through the first round and just was like, Jesus Christ. He is all over him, and his wrestling is fantastic. And, and Ramazanov, you know, he's got fantastic wrestling too. He's got good power in his hands. He just, you know, got caught, and uh, we'll see what he's learned from that. But this is a great fight, great matchup. It's just I'm sorry that it had to happen here instead of it happening again in the finals if it was going to, you know, shake out that way. Yeah, I mean, it's a... <sighs> It's got to be hard to get up for someone you just fought. That's unless a, you lost. That unless is a rough. Yeah, unless you lost. You know, that, yeah. that is, that's the real truth is if you're looking at, you know, Murad, man, I just lost to him. Yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to fucking go at him again. But if you're Musaya, if you're looking and going, dude, I just yeah. beat him. Yeah. Uh, is there any other fights on these, uh, on these bottom ones that you want to talk about? Well, uh, you got, you got Ray Cooper there. He's yeah. always fun to watch. He's he's a gamer. You talk about you know, we talk about Hawaiians that come forward. He's taken on Berkamoff, who came from Bellator. Look at Berkamoff. 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 Excuse me. Berkamoff. Berkamoff. Good fighter though. No, really he's, good. He's fighter. really a good fighter. He's a really you know, good fighter. Tough dude. But uh, Cooper though has got the power to put him out. Yeah, he does. But Berkamoff has the ability. He's got good. He's got good stand up. It's clean. He got caught by Lorenz Larkin with the. The elbow, elbow from hell, yeah. If you remember that, which is oh, yeah. know, something that's not going to happen very often, but it was a great uh, elbow by Lorenz to you know knock him out. But Berhamov has got good wrestling; he can take Cooper down uh, if Cooper gets tired. You know, Cooper's good with his wrestling in the beginning of uh, the fight, but if he gets tired, it starts to you know wane, and he ends up you know getting taken down. If that happens, you know. You can look for as the fight goes on in distance. Mm-hmm. I look for Brahamov to actually start to take over early in the fight. I look for Ray Cooper to have the power to put him away. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the fight, the only other fight on here that I'm really interested in at all is the Tyler Diamond and Enrique Barzola. That's a good Barzola. fight, dude. Barzola used to be a teammate of mine. Uh, he's a grinder. I, I like him at 135 a little bit more yeah. than 145, but I also don't like when he had to kill himself to get down there. But the thing is, at 135, he fit the the body frame normally of a 135. Or you have guys like Sean O'Malley and Patchy yeah. Mix that stand no out. No one's going to fit with those. Yeah, you know, and there's Corey Sanhagen's. Those guys are just, they're just different. Yeah. Right? Height, reach, range, 5'11". And, but that's not Enrique Barzola, man. Barzola is that 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, fighter. Yep. But just a, just a dog. He's but, just going to come in. Push the pace, grind on you, hang on you, try to land knees, elbows, take you down. Just make he's, it ugly. He's an ugly fighter. Yeah, but, but goddamn, he's fun to watch because he he's is ugly non-stop. too as a person, but yeah, he's still. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a day. I love me some Enrique, though. He's yeah. like, dude, he's so fun to watch fight. He's just an overall, an outstanding person. Yeah. Love being around guys that just, they're always positive, always, you know, ah, this is the fight game. This is, but he loves doing what he's doing. Love it. He's Tyler got a diamond though. He's got a set of lungs. Great win. The, Barzola, you got to say, he's got a set of lungs that reaches kneecaps. Yeah, he's barrel chested, man. Those Dude. barrel chested guys always seem to have bigger lungs. Man, I'll tell you what, he doesn't get, I've never seen him get tired to the point you look at him and you go, oh, he's tired. Because no, he you know, just, he's just he's got going. The, he's, he's got, got a the motor. balls to push through. He just pushes through. He's like, okay, this is what it is. I'm not, I can't be, you know, the the more you make yourself feel tired and look tired, the more tired you get. I I said, it's so funny. I go back to one fight. If you haven't seen this fight, go back and watch the Jeremy Horn, Trevor Prangley fight. That will tell you that it doesn't matter if you won the fight, your appearance inside the cage will show the judges that you lost. He looked, Trevor Prangley is my best friend, best man at my wedding. This dude looks so damn tired. It cost him the fight. I thought Trevor won that fight. I don't know if you did, but I thought Trevor, it was a close fight, close but fight. I thought Trevor won the fight, yeah. but it sure the hell didn't help 
him getting the decision, Trevor getting the decision, but the way he looked, he would step back, put his hands on his knees. He would step, he was like this doing the, <laughs> doing the fucking big country fucking Roy Nelson. Well, see, just, but that was Trevor because Trevor had the flat oh, top. Yeah. Right. And as soon as he got hot and sweaty, his flat top started to fold. Yeah. <laughs> and you and just hang forward. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, Trevor's tired. <laughs> He's exhausted. <laughs> exhausted. <laughs> But he just he there was he just didn't have the power to show that he wasn't tired. It didn't matter what it was; no, he, he was could tired. never not show. No, he was tired. I, well, I wish I wish Randy, Randy, Randy Couture against Mike Van Arsdale is the perfect yeah. epitome of both guys were freaking tired. Yeah, one was mentally strong enough to look over and go, "I need to get up and start dancing." Yeah. <laughs> And it broke. It makes a difference. It broke Mike Van Arsdale as he sat there looking. He goes, oh, fuck. Dog. You know, they say that a, a wounded lion, right, fights the hardest or something like that. Yeah. A wounded animal, normally a wounded lion or whatever. But Trevor was the guy. I wish I had the video footage of it all. But, man, we used to film. Tre he would, when he was exhausted, he'd just sit in the corner with one arm on the rope, top rope, because at AK we used to ring until we moved to the new gym. And he would sit with one arm on there. And as you got closer, he would hit or kick you with one or two shots. And then you'd back away. And then he would just rest there until you came back. And then he'd hit or kick you until you came. It was so, it was like something you'd see seriously out of a cartoon. It was hilarious. Or like one of those Three Stooges things, right? Like it was, a, it was so funny, man. And, but he hit hard enough and he kicked hard enough to, to make you fear, you know, make, make you take close. the step backwards. Yeah, so you take a step out, and then he'd get enough energy after he'd rested for about a minute, you know, and then he'd just rah, he'd waste all that energy in one big explosion, double leg, takedown, whatever it was. But Tyler Diamond, though, John, tell me how you think these guys match up. Look, Tyler Diamond is he's tough as nails, too. He's, he's really improved. His wrestling is really good. His stand-up has gotten way better. and uh, But it's going to be that the pace. Tyler Diamond is one of those guys that I'm going to say – when he can control the pace, he does very well. When you push him to that that point where he's starting to get pushed, as I, I like to say, he's getting pushed over the cliff where he can't maintain that RPM, that's where he has problems. And that's what Enrique Barzola does. So, But if Tyler Diamond can take Barzola down and control him and make him pay on the ground and do damage to him and slow him down that way, he can win the fight. Yeah, that's. I, I think it's gonna be a good fight. Enrique is gonna have to push early in the fight to get Tyler Diamond tired. Tyler Diamond's gonna have to try to get him out of there in the first yep. round, round and a half, and then it's gonna become the survival of the fittest after that because Enrique is just gonna be just putting the pressure, putting the pressure on him. So, Bet US, America's favorite sportsbook and casino, live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer: a 125 percent sign-up bonus on your first three deposits, plus 10 percent gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. Uh, all right, hey guys, that's gonna wrap up our PFL talk. But let's go ahead and talk right into the uh, into the UFC. But first, before we get started, this whole episode is brought to you by Bet US. I want to thank them so much for continuing to sponsor this podcast as well as Element. Element also is our number one of our number one reps for, uh, for this podcast. I want to thank both of them for uh, standing by us and sticking with us. So we thank them as much as possible. But hey, hit those links down below. You have both the BetUS link down below, the Element link down below. Check those out with BetUS. Your first three deposits, you get a 125% bonus with your first three deposits. Not your first one, not your second one, but also your third. So make sure you guys, every one of your first three deposits, you get 125% bonus with your first deposit up to $2,000. I thought it was $2,500, but nope, it's $2,000 up to $2,000 on your first three deposits. <coughs> let's ah. check them out. And uh, John, let's jump right into it, the main event. Look, the UFC is coming back with a, a very good main event. I love the main event. Jared Cannonier taking on Kyle Bahalo. You take a look at this. This is it's almost one of those where I always talk about the UFC <laughs> is me. UFC is going to see exactly where Kai Borhalo is. That's why they're doing this fight. You can you know take a look at Jared Cannon Cannonier who you know has fought for the title. He's forty <clears throat> years old, and that's the big difference. You know when you're taking a look at middleweight who is now 40 years old. He's sitting in the top section of the rankings, but 
he has lost his last fight. Um, they're trying to see, okay, who's the guy that's going to take his place? Who's the guy that's going to move forward? Kyber Hollow is 16 and one on his record. He's looked fantastic since coming to the UFC, you know, and we're talking about a guy who, you know, he's at that age, 31 years of age, 30 years of age, somewhere right in there. He's right in the prime of his career. So the UFC always does this. They always take a guy who they look at. They know he's high in the rankings being cannoneer. They know he's good. Can this young lion come in and take the pelt, you know, take that ranking move the one kind of out of that position and take over and be that guy. This is the same as, you know, when you, you look back in times, Yair Rodriguez being super young, you know, they put him against BJ Penn mm -hmm. and you look and you go, I see what you're doing. I know exactly what you're doing. You're, you know, BJ Penn was fighting in the featherweight division at that time. And he had the name, but he was the old lion and they're putting that young stud against him. And because they, they want him to have that name on the record. And I honestly believe this is that fight. That's why they're putting this together. They're looking and giving Kai Bohalo the opportunity to prove that he belongs in the top five in the middleweight division. I think it's two reasons why they do this. Okay, let's hear One it. is Kai Bohalo is someone we don't have to, we're not paying a lot of money right now. True. And if we think, and we're probably paying Jared Cannonier, maybe double. Oh, yeah. So that's one reason. Second is, yeah, Jared Cannonier is 40 years old. And we are paying him all that money. We know he won't be around much longer. So let's see if we can get the young stud an opportunity to get a win over a highly ranked fighter. And we can get him to fight top level fighters for less money because he's still on that sure. shitty contract. Yeah. So and they're gonna keep that's the way that's the way this business works. Well, you know, you gotta figure out he came in off of the uh the Dana White contender series, which is it's great for, you know. A young fighter to have the opportunity if they want to go to the UFC, but that contract is not something that you're going to say. Well, that's a great contract. You know, it's they're going to start you off. It's it's all laid out. You know exactly what you're getting into if you're going to, you know, sign that contract. Because you know Dana's the one awarding. Hey, we're going to award you this contract, and that's great. But it's great for the UFC because they get some really good talent, and they get it at discounted prices. Let's just be honest. <clears throat> Very true. But I mean, John, I'm looking at Bet US for the main event on the odds here. You got minus 225 for Cabajalo, and you yeah. got plus 185 for Jared Cannonier. Do you think point. that warrants that? Uh, you know, if you're going to look at you look at past performances, Kai is 6 and 0 oh in the UFC. Uh, since, since getting there, he's got wins, you know, against uh, Abu Magomedov, which was you know, a decision, but he looked really good in that and, and showed that, you know what, he was progressing and being smart in the way he was fighting. He, his win against Paul Craig, you know, fought smart. Everything he's been doing, you look and you go, hey, uh, he's getting better and better. And the real question is, when he's put against someone like a Jared Cannonier, in the stand-up, I'm still going to say I think Jared Cannonier has the advantage. But if Kai Bohalo can get him to the ground and do some damage to him on the ground, wear him down on the ground, you know, because Cannoneer is super strong. Um, he is durable, but he does slow down when you make him fight at a pace or in a position that he's not super comfortable with. And I think that's the way for Bahalo to win this fight is, hey. So he's a typical 40-year-old fighter. Well, of course. You know, that's <laughs> you know, what you can say. That's but, what he just said. Well, you know, but you can take a look and, you know, Cannoneer is that guy. Physically, he's a stud. You know, he really is. And, yeah, he's 40. I would say, you know, biologically he's 40, but, you know, his body doesn't look that and he doesn't act that way. And he's had some good wins. You know, he had the win against, you know, Vittor, uh, Vittori. He had the win against Strickland. Strickland still doesn't. Brendan Allen really had win. a win against Vittori, too, the other night. That was only so. a two-punch. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Two-piece. He almost Two. collected the soda. <laughs> he almost collected the soda. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, and then his last fight was against uh, uh, Imanov, where, you know, he got put away. Yeah. And so this is that one. He's going to – this is going to say a lot about where his career is going to go. Okay, he's going to be that guy who is still in the in the mix, kind of, 
with a win or he's going to be the guy who's now going, you know, towards the, uh, towards the, the doors, not that he's going to be put away, but you know, he's not going to be getting this. He's not going to be getting the main event fights. Yeah, but go back to my original question, though, with the odds. Minus 225, Kai Bahalo, Jared Kennanier, a plus 185. Yes. It, You're I, saying that the young buck deserves that I'm not type of warranted that. numbers? No, I'm not. I understand I why they're doing it. it's a little too high. Though. I understand why they're, they're doing it based upon, you know, Kennanier coming off of the loss and the way that Bahalo has just gone in there and fought really well against a different style of opponent multiple times gone against grapplers, gone against strikers, and fought well against all of them. So I can understand why they're doing it. It's a little little bit out of, you know, touch as far as I think, you know, Cannoneer is actually a good bet right now as far as if you want to take the underdog, you're getting good odds. Got it. All right, next fight. Next fight, we got Angela Overkill Hill. Taking on Tabitha Ricci uh, for the co-main event. Good fight, man. It is uh, a good look, fight. I, Tabitha Ricci, short, compact, but aggressive. You know, she will bring the action. Angela Hill never runs away from a fight. She's bringing it. She circles, moves, sticks and moves, big power, presses the action. She, she's she been on the, the, we've said this a bunch of times, she's been on the opposite end. Of some some bad decisions oh, and yeah. some really close fights where she could should have won or could have won, you know, depending on which way the judges uh, saw it. She came on the the uh, bad end of several of those though. Yeah. But I look at her; she's kind of I, I don't know if she just kind of has settled down and just realized like I don't care what happens and just go out there and fight my ass no, off. No, I don't think that's what it is. Well, what is it? T- tell me. T- give me your, your big John wisdom. Let me hear it. Look, I'm going to be honest about it. If you take a look at Angela Hill, Angela came in. You take a look at her entire record. Was she 17 and 13? Okay. She's the co-main event. And you take a look at that and you go, well, how is that at the co-main event? How is that person in that position? She deserves it. Because first off, all, right, all of her fights, except for, I think, four have been in the UFC. Hmm. Okay? Because she came on with the ulti- with the, the ultimate fighter when they had that season. She lost, you know, right away because she was just a stand-up fighter. She had no ground game at all. You know, the UFC used her a little bit and then released her. She went to Invicta. She became the Invicta champion. She was undefeated in Invicta, then comes back. And the one thing that she has done throughout her career, she's continuously gotten better as far as being a mixed martial artist. Her ground game has always improved. And she's, you know, got people like, you know, um, I'm, I'm losing my mind right now. Jenna fights in the PFL. Um, oh. God damn. She just lost. Uh, I can't think. I can't think Jenna Bishop. 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 Thank Jenna you. Bishop. Jenna Bishop. She's got people like Jenna Bishop, who's a phenomenal grappler. She's got a hell of a freaking ground game. And she has put herself in positions of, I'm going to just continuously learn from Jenna. And I'm going to help Jenna in her stand-up, and she's going to help me in, in my ground. And it's worked. You know, she has gotten so good that she has made wrestling and jujitsu a part of her game where she's taking down. She just got her first submission win. You know, when you take a look at a record and stuff, all of those fights, everything, n- never a submission. All of a sudden, her last fight, what does she get? She gets a mounted guillotine choke. And you look and you go, way to go, because you're continuously learning, meaning you're continuously improving who you are. And look, she's an older fighter now, but she is fighting better now than she has ever fought in the past. She's that, you know, and you talk about all the time that women can, you know, go and they tend to have longer careers and do better as they're getting older. And she's absolute proof of what you talk about. She is that person that has continuously gotten better. And at, you know, what is she, 38, 39 years of age now? She's fighting better now than she's ever fought. She looks phenomenal. Oh, look at, like, look at her. Like, um, I mean, she fights her ass off. I think the reason why the UFC keeps bringing her back and that she's on, she's doing well right now, but I'm saying when she was going through that rough patch of losing close decisions, 
It's because she fights her ass off. And she she will fight at a moment's notice. Yeah. She never says no. <clears throat> Anyways, when I'm looking at the odds on the co-main event through BetUS, basically they're they not basically, they are even. Minus 115 and a minus 115. It's a pick them, choose them fight. Tabitha has got her hands full if she keeps this thing on the feet. Oh, yeah. She can be she can come forward, but she's gonna have a hard time with the reach. She's gonna have a hard time with the lateral movement of Angela Hill. Angela's got great, great movement, which causes yep. people problems because they're 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 always trying to get her to settle so they can take their shot. She doesn't settle. No, nope. you know? she stays moving. Yeah. She's on her bike the whole time, but she's not running from the fight. She's no, sticking no, and no, moving no. as yeah. she's moving. Absolutely. So that, yeah, th- there's a difference between like someone who's just up and running. We've seen John Jones turn his back and run during the fight. <laughs> okay? This is not what she's doing. No. She's literally like sticking and moving, keeping her lateral movement. She has great footwork. And what she's done now too is as you've gotten into the clinch, she's gotten really good at kneeing you, elbowing you and clinching, doing clinch work. And then making space and getting away and striking on the way out. That keeps you from re-entering right away. Yeah. She's on a she's on a, a path of, like I've said before, with the older women, she's on a path of having more success as she gets older. Tabitha Ritchie, explosive, fast, comes aggressive. Can she can she get past the length? That's gonna be the, the question, John. The speed and the length of Angela Hill is gonna give her some problems in the beginning. You know, unless she can figure it out. Unless Angela Hill is slowed down overnight. Um, Tabitha Rich is going to so. have a hard time. But if she does get her down, if she does get Angela Hill down, Angela will still be hard to hold down. But I think Tabitha Richie being as strong as she is, physically as strong as she is, um, you know, the heavy hips being able to keep that pressure on her, I think she'll be able to have some sex from the top. Success. I was gonna say, she's going to have sex from the top. Like, hey, don't, I'm not ruling anything out. Okay, but <laughs> success. Well, this, from is, the top. this is a different type of UFC right here. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Look, in this day and age, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, uh, all right. But yeah, I'm saying she'll have some success from the top, uh, whether it's submission chasing or the ground and pound. If she goes too heavy on the ground and pound, I think Angela has a chance of getting up. If she stays on top and controls the top pressure, Angela will maybe make a mistake and look for the, and you can have tap at the Richie look for the, the submission. Yeah. Look, if you're going to be honest and you're looking at this, you go, you got to say the tab that has the advantage still on the ground. She, oh, absolutely. She, she's gone with some really good people as far as grapplers and she's done well. Uh, her last loss was to uh, Lupita uh, Godinez. And that is a stand up fighter. That's where Lupita wants to be. And she was able to keep the fight for the most part on the feet. She went, went down a couple of times, but, that's the fight game that Angela needs to, you know, be working on is, yeah, I, I can end up going to the ground with you, but I want to think about getting back to my feet and doing damage to you because that's what slows Tabitha down. Yeah, agree. I agree. I agree with you. Next fight. Next fight is going to be Ryan Loader taking on Robert Valentine. Uh, this is one a lot of people are not going to know. These people, Valentine is coming from... <laughs> They are the Ultimate Fighter 32 middleweight finals. Yeah. John, say that again. This is your, like this is this is one of those fights, and not a lot of people are going to know. John, um, you're one of them. I'm one of them. Well, this is like... this is the if if you're watching tough, these are the people coming in as far as uh, uh, into the finals for the t- to win tough with uh, Grasso versus Shevchenko as coaches and stuff. So. Didn't they used to be like the main event or the co-main event on the shows, and then now no, it's... they never, never. I, I don't think they've ever been the main event as far as the the those. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. But the co-main, the co-main event. Yeah, co-main. Yeah, because I remember okay. like Diego Sanchez and Kenny yeah, but... Florian, and they were the co-main. Well, remember it was no, it was uh, actually Forrest Griffin and, and Bonner were the the were co-main. co-main. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah, one of the coaches tried a main event. Yeah, many times they would do that. Then they got away from them doing. Yeah. They got away from them fighting at all. If you look at Michael Chandler versus Connor. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you low look, blow, buddy. Too soon. Hey, too soon. It is what it is. But it's one of those. You know, if you've been watching the show, you're going to know who these people are. I've known uh, Valentin from uh, watched him in airs a lot. He, mm-hmm. Tough guy, uh, loader. Same thing. You know, both of them are good. It's going to be interesting to see how they do. But the no, one, not- the one before that is the fight that I'm really interested in. Yes, in this. and that's Michael Morales taking on uh, Neil Magny. And we, again, here we go talking about that young stud fighter. 
And uh, Michael Morales has really proven himself to be super uh, aggressive, very powerful with his stand-up, uh, very athletic, you know. But he's taking on a guy in Neil Magny that we know is, you know, smart, smart, wily veteran, good on the ground, good in his stand-up, you know. Just this is one of those ones. Again, I'm looking at the UFC's putting this together again. Okay, we've given you some people, you know, putting you against – good talent and you've done well you're undefeated so now i'm going to put you against the guy that is got a good name uh you know and he, it's not again i don't want to say that morales has not fought him he fought max griffin he fought jake matthews so he's fought good good talent but neil magny i think is that next step up and we're going to see how he does yeah neil's definitely the next step up but the more difficult thing for morales is going to be just the body style which Neil Magny is. And that's where everyone has a hard time. Whether you're a top-level guy or you're a low-level person, you're going to have a hard time with just having to deal with Neil's like long push kicks, his long jab, the way he moves around, kind of like flutter steps a little bit. Like he does, he he just doesn't fight like a normal MMA guy. Yeah. And his body style makes it difficult to get him and lift him up and take him down. Makes it difficult to get in because he's got the long jab, he's got the long kicks, he's got... The, He's, it's a different style. You see it a little bit with those other fighters that are tall, long, and lanky, like I've always said. Yeah. Is you know, you've got the Corey Sanhagens, you've got the Sean O'Malley's, you've got just these fighters that are that body style tend to give people problems. And Neil Magny, doesn't matter how old he is, he's gonna give these young bucks some problems because they I don't think they've ever had to deal with somebody that is as good as Neil Magny, but then fights kind of funky. Yeah. Has, you know, has that funkiness. And I, I know that's uh uh, you know, the funk thing is uh, belongs to uh, Ben Askren. But but funk. I mean, like Neil Magny. Either that or Aljo being thing. the funk master. Yeah, but I mean, the two of them, though, right? like, like they, they, they have some funk to them, you know? Like yeah. Ben Askren's got the funk. Neil Magny's got the funk. It's just funky to have to deal with the way that they fight. And so, um, but Morales, man, power in his hands and just smooth. And he looks like he's fast. out there just. He looks like he's out there just like, ah, okay, dude, I'm going to whoop your ass. I'm going to go home, collect my check. I'm like, it doesn't seem like there's a care in the world. He did get tired, I want to say, two fights ago, maybe two. I think two fights ago, he looked a little tired and fatigued in, in one of the fights. Maybe it was his first fight in the UFC. But it was one, one of the two fights I, I saw, um, one of his fights I saw. He looked a little tired towards the end of the fight. Was that the Max but, Griffin uh, fight? It may, no, I thought Max, I felt like he was calling. I think it was the fight before that. I don't know. I can't think of what yeah. it was off the of, Okay. But, uh, uh, but I know yeah, his look, last his last fight was Jake Matthews. Okay. And he fought Max Maybe, maybe it was the Max that. Griffin fight. Before maybe Max, it was, it was Adam Fugit. Okay. Maybe it was, yeah. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you. But one of them, though, it was like one of his first fights. What was his first fight in the UFC? Uh, Trevin Giles. Yeah, Trevin Giles. I it think. might have been Trevin Giles because he looked he looked good in the first round. Did that fight go the distance? No, it ended first round TKO. He won. Okay, uh, but how fast? Uh, time four minutes and six seconds. Okay, hmm. Uh, Maybe it was the next one then. His contender anyways, series went the distance. No, not that one. It was his first fight actually in the UFC, not the contender series. He's only yeah. What he's twenty four, twenty five years of age. But I just George, thought, what I is he? Twenty five. Twenty five. I remember watching him have a fight where he had he had success in the first round, uh, big shots, whatever it was. It was just picking him apart, and then as the fight went on, he started to kind of slow down a little bit. He was just having a hard time with some clinch work and struggling with some stuff. But I think I think obviously once you start feeling that, you'll realize that over time to- over to- over time what you got to focus on more cardio, more conditioning. It's not always about hitting the mitts and the pads. Okay, it's about getting your making sure your body's in shape. Because the better shape your body's in, the easier it is for you to do that pad work and that mitt work and the and the the bag work and it just clean your crisper. You yeah. get better technique with better conditioning. You're in. But that should be a fun fight, man. I want to know how That's the young buck one. deals with uh, yeah. Neil Magny and his body. Yeah. I agree with you. Before that, we have Edmund Shabazian taking on Gerald Merchart. Dude, Gerald yeah. Merchart is like the. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what to say. He's like the old man, but he's not an old man. But he's the old man of the of the middleweight division. He's been there forever. He's fought everybody. You know, he's got a ton of submission wins. Edmund Shabazian was the hot thing for a little bit until he ran into. I was the hot thing for a little bit too. Yeah, <laughs> that happens. Turn cold fast. 
But oh, yeah. this is actually a good matchup. This, this you got to look and say, you know, people are going to think that Shabazian is the 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 favorite in this. But Mershart so good with his submissions. Yeah. And so good at making people make mistakes that fall into the way he wants the fight to go that, you know, Shabazian needs to be smart. Yeah, he does need to be smart, but I'm going to lean towards Shabazian on this fight. Oh yeah, I felt like I felt I like he's feeling. Seems like he's found his his uh, his way. He seems like he's on track. I think mershart has got to be. He's got to be very cautious on the feet. Uh, you know, he's going to stay trying to stay long and lanky. Mershart is. He's either going to be all the way out or he's going to try to crush the space and get all the way in. On the ground, I'm going to give it to Mershart. Oh yeah, I don't think there's I don't think there's any question. No doubt about it. But can he get Shabazian down? That's the thing. Shabazian's got pretty good wrestling defense. And on the feet, he's a way better fighter, I think, than Mershart. Way better fighter. <clears throat> but this does kind of give you a throwback feel, right? Yeah. UFC 1, 2, 3, kind of that feeling of stand-up guy versus grappling guy. But it should be. I think it should be a good fight. Yep. <clears throat> uh, John, is there any other fights on these uh, prelims you wanted to chat about? Uh, you know what? I, I do want to say that uh, George wants to talk about... Uh... <laughs> George <laughs> Borshev, lot of he's going to do his little Vladi dance. He's, because George wants to see him dance, and said he didn't do that dance too well against uh, Chase Hooper, who uh, ended up having a very good fight against him. We're going to see how he comes back from that. He's taken on a, uh, uh, I think uh, James Lion Top, and so interesting mm-hmm. matchup as far as uh, Borshev is good in the stand up. He's clean and everything, you know. We'll see how uh, he does against Lion Top. All right, guys. Hey, that's going to wrap up our <laughs> UFC talk. And that's actually going to wrap up our show as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick little breakdown that we did on a, on Tuesday, which actually drops on Wednesday mornings for you guys. Yes, yes. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. And John, take us away, buddy. For everyone out there, have a good one. We hope you enjoy the fights, and we will see you.